it won't have escaped many people that David Moffat is back in Wales and suggesting he can fix the problems with Welsh rugby. After a controversial appearance on Scrum 5 and several radio shows, he has been hosting his own debates at rugby clubs across South Wales. We're here this evening at Tafswell RFC to hear his vision for Welsh rugby, including plans to replace the regions with provinces and a reshaping of the WRU board. So David, why are you really back? It seems like a long way to come just to pick a fight. I'm here because I'm passionate about Welsh rugby and Wales, and uh, I think that I can make a difference. And if I didn't think that, I wouldn't have come back. But why are you the right man for the job? Is there no one better in Wales or even the UK that can do this? Well, there may very well be, but I don't see them with their feet on the ground and doing this uh, sort of thing. The thing that I'm doing tonight, for example, at Tafswell Rugby Club and bringing to the notice of a lot of people just exactly what I think needs to be done to fix Welsh rugby. Is rugby a viable business in Wales? Will we always have less money than the others and we should just accept it? Or should we just have less professional teams? Well, prior to today's decision by the um, Six Nations to come to some agreement on ERC, I would have said in unequivocally yes. However, it seems that uh, we're going to be kept in the um, Pro 12 and I think that has got a lot of problems associated with it financially, not only for Welsh teams, but also for the other teams in the Pro 12. What's happened today, quite clearly, is that the English and French unions are the big winners. Because not only are they going to get more money from the, whatever new ERC deal is done, but they're also going to keep all of their money from the top 14 of the Aviva. And that is huge money. So we don't have a level playing field anymore, it's a little bit more like that, and we're bashing up against that. And w what's interesting is that there's been a great deal of debate about Wales having to look after the interests of Ireland, Scotland and Italy, and yet England and France have basically said, stuff you, we're off to do our own thing. The money there now is incredible, and we're left to pick up the pieces and try and make the Pro 12 a viable competition. The Pro 12 should have as its first strategy increase of funds coming into it. That doesn't happen. We're then just a, another, a feeder union to England and France, very much like Wales football is. And what you then see, I think, is a reduction in the number of professional teams in, in Wales, to perhaps two, one in Swansea, one in Cardiff, who can, and the names won't mean anything. What would you like to see happen and how would you get that funding in at this stage? I'd love to be negotiating um, some, some funding and television deals for the Rabo once I knew exactly what the Rabo was offering. Is there a situation when the deals have been done and it becomes too late for David Moffat to take over and start <laughs> running things? It could well be, but uh, in the next couple of days I'm going to be releasing some information that I've been gleaning looking at the financials of, of one year versus 2013. And that is that the executive emoluments have increased since 2007 by 67%. My understanding is that that can only uh, reflect the payments to the chief executive and the chairman, because they're the only two that get paid. A massive 67% increase since 2007. Now, I mean, I would ask the Welsh public, wouldn't you like a 67% increase? over the last period when things were so difficult? Okay. I know I would. I think, I mean, that's something obviously we haven't had the opportunity yet to speak with the Welsh Rugby Union. It is something we'd like to do, and indeed we'd like to have both have you, have you both on our show at some point to actually debate those points. But you think... have got a snowball's hell in chance of that happening, because I would be there tomorrow. But do you think you could get the, the, the right person from the WRU there? We'll have to see. We haven't actually well, if you do yet. that, if you do that, let me just tell you something. You'll be able to sell a program for, for mega bucks right around the rugby world. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, you appeared on, on the Scrum 5 program. Yeah, well, that appearing is a little bit, <laughs> you know, you're taking a bit of a license there, aren't you? Because I got asked a question and um, I didn't quite get to answer it the way I wanted to because the interviewer, unlike yourself, kept interrupting me. Um, and, uh, and I thought that was most unfortunate. The other thing about that show was that it was supposed to be taped as live, and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was heavily edited, and if you talk to anybody that went there, they will tell you that it was. Can I just remind you what it was like in 2003? The stadium had debts of £72 million. 
The union had just lost three and a half million pounds in the year that I arrived. There were nine professional teams in Wales and there was only 12 in the whole of the Southern Hemisphere. And the union was unable to pay its debts when they became due and payable. So it was technically insolvent. That's what I was faced with. So do you think therefore that the, Re the Welsh Rugby public is a bit deluded in thinking that maybe you were a little bit to blame for everything that was going on oh, and look, not goes, welcoming you back? That goes with the territory, doesn't it? Everybody's got short memories and, you know, and they see the, the, the success of the recent years and what have you, but they don't remember what unbelievable pressure the union was under at the time that I got here. So, in very quick order, what did I do about that? I got the debt down to £45 million pounds, and I had an agreement with the bank that that would be paid off over 35 years thereby allowing the union to actually meet its obligations as well as be able to invest more money. What's happened since? They've decided they want to pay down the debt early, which has resulted in keeping the uh, clubs poor. And I think that that is a travesty. I don't know whether I'm going to get elected or not. What I will do, though, is I will make the clubs absolutely aware of what is going on. You see, just take this money issue. Who does that money belong to? Does it belong to the board or does it belong to the executive? Neither. That money belongs to the clubs. What you get at the moment, though, is the WRU saying, oh, aren't we great? We've given the clubs X number of pounds of their own money back to them. And what they're doing is they're not giving enough. And I will be demonstrating that in the days to come. So is your purpose more to open people's eyes to the current situation rather than get elected to the board yourself? No, I've got a dual purpose. On the one hand, I want to open people's eyes to what's actually been going on, and on the other, I want to get elected. And I want to get elected because I think I've got the leadership skills, which are currently absent at the WRU, to actually take the game forward in a united, settled down and calm way, unlike what it is at the moment. Every single year, it's chaos in Wales for the last I don't know how many years. I mean, just take um, the club rugby scene. Next year, they're supposed to be going through another change to the way in which the leagues are structured. Fourth change in four years. And nobody really knows what next year is actually all about at the moment, other than they've been told something, but apparently that hasn't been agreed. What sort of a business runs itself like that? You can't have that chaos all the time. You've got to settle it down. But will your proposals actually stop, say, the flood of players that are going abroad to play in France? Well, we can't stop the ones that have already gone. No, of course. And it's going to get harder because now we're back in the Pro 12 to stop others from going, irrespective of who runs the professional teams. In terms of central contracts, I'm most likely the only person in Wales that has had any experience with it. Because when I was running New Zealand rugby, I was part of the six-man team that did the deal that got the money from News Limited. And I was also part of the New Zealand rugby union that put in place central contracts. And Wales didn't. They just didn't do anything. The club stepped in and said, well, we'll contract the players. And my view is very, very clear on central contracting. It's either everybody or it's nobody. Is it too late? Well, you would have to say it is, depending on what happens with the regions, because they have a responsibility to their shareholders to protect their assets. Their assets are their players. So they're not going to give up their assets because they would be in breach of their fiduciary duty to their shareholders, i.e. regional shareholders. So it's a, it's, it's a long bow for the WIU to think that they can actually just get a century contract and play here and one there. It's just not going to work. And in my view, that is being done purely for headlines. Nothing else. We've heard what David Moffat has to say about the state of Welsh rugby, but what about the view from the other camp? We'd like to now invite the WRU to contact us for an interview to put their case to the fans in the clubs and pubs up and down the country. In the meantime, IWR TV will be back very soon with more grassroots games and interviews with famous faces from the world of rugby. Look out for further details soon on Twitter.